They're morally tainted. I mean, there's just no question about that. You can't say he's a racist and what he said was textbook racism, uh, but I support him because he's the nominee of my party. Wow. That's ABC News political commentator and Hillary Clinton fan, Cokie Roberts, talking about Donald Trump supporters. But could this media bias against Trump actually influence the polls on Election Day in the opposite way that they've been telling us and end up being a big reason behind a Trump win? Joining me now, Vanderbilt University professor of political science and law, Carol Swain. Good evening, Professor. It is very good to have you on the show. You know, when I Thank heard Cokie Roberts say that, I was stunned. I mean, everyone knows that uh, Donald's my friend, that I support him. Uh, but to hear someone who works for ABC and PBS say that if I support him, I am morally tainted is shocking from the mainstream media. Now, we've heard from PBS and, and from, I, I think, some of the other mainstream outlets that you know, it's not just the the less educated. They're calling them the low information voters. I mean, there's so much editorializing. Is that the way it's supposed to be? Well, it's certainly not the way it's supposed to be. And it's also absolutely wrong, according to the data. Uh, during the spring, The Economist published a poll that showed that 43 percent of the Trump supporters had college degrees. And as far as the ones that have low levels of education, high school degrees or less, that's only 16 percent of the Republican base and a fifth of the Trump supporters. And so it's really misinformation. I think Mr. Trump draws from all sectors of society, uh, including uh, women. He, during the primaries, he never got less than 25 percent of the female vote in those states. Or he won. Is, are they? Are the Democrats relying on a self-fulfilling prophecy where if you say something long enough, people not only believe it but they follow it? Well, I think it's that Saul Alinsky a strategy of using ridicule to embarrass people, and so they have set up a situation where there are people that are supporting Donald Trump, but they are afraid to uh, to share that information. And I have met so many people, and this is anecdotal uh, data, I've met so many people that are Democrats or highly educated colleagues that tell me that they're, they whisper that they're going to vote for Donald Trump. And I know that for myself, I am a Trump supporter now. But you've I didn't been start a off as a Trump supporter. But, I mean, I had to really think about it. You know, I'm educated, so I'm supposed to support someone, you know, that. Um, according to the media and within the Republican Party, uh, it was assumed that, of course, you would support either Ted Cruz or Rubio or someone more acceptable. And I think that the Trump support is underestimated and that people are afraid to put bumper stickers on their cars and yard signs so in their that, yards so that because in the end, they know. We may be surprised at the election. But let's yes. talk about one other issue quickly. Has the Democratic Party taken black voters for granted? Of course they have, and they've done this, you know, as far as I can remember. I hope that the black community will that they are already awakening. I see some of this among young people. I came out of the Democratic Party and became a Republican in 2009. I'd mm -hmm. like to see more uh, African Americans do that. We can't continue to do the same thing over and over and over again and expect a different result. And ultimately, you know, in terms of the mainstream media and, you know, propelling this this belief or this concept that, you know, there's no way Donald can win and he's going to ruin everything. I mean, you know, how much impact do you think that that has on someone and on, on the voters in general? I think it discourages people and it makes them wonder whether or not it's true. But I believe we're going to have a surprise on Election Day. I actually believe that Donald Trump is going to be our next president. And I believe that he will be a good president because his approach will be different. The bureaucracy has been in shambles for decades. And it needs the hand of someone that knows something about business. And there are just so many other areas where we do need someone that's going to infuse Washington with new people and a new way of thinking. All right, Carol Swain, thanks so much for being with us thank this you. evening.
And it's almost that time. Street justice is next. Woo.